Welcome to the Property Renovation Podcast. For anyone who loves renovation, wants to save money, and to learn the best tips and tricks of the industry. And now, your host, three times award winner of leading renovation website, House, and over 15 years in the industry, renovating just over 200 properties, James Woodham. Hi, my name is James and welcome to the 22nd episode of the Property Renovation Podcast. Today, I've got a special episode for you. I interviewed Ash, who was someone on Instagram that I was following for quite a while and he was buying his first property. So I watched him go right through the phases of getting in there, destroying everything and putting it all back together again. And he never done this with any builders. He'd done it with friends of his, which was quite remarkable. But before I put you through to that episode, I just want to tell you that the sponsor of this podcast, Akiva Projects, are launching the Akiva Toolkit at the end of this month. And it was designed to have you go on and download 10 documents that will simplify your entire project and put it all into a way that you can organize it more efficiently. And it will save you some time and money as well. So it wasn't put together just by me. It was put together by a few other people that have had more than 25 years in the industry. Lots of experience, lots of valuable advice. And yeah, so that's launching at the end of the month. If you are interested in getting the entire 10 documents for free, you can email us marketing at akivaprojects.com and we're going to pick a few people to send out the entire documents for free. So without further ado, I'll put you through to the episode. Enjoy. Hello and uh, to all you listeners, welcome to the Property Renovation Podcast. This is episode 22. I've actually got uh, a very special um, episode this time. We've got a um, a home uh, transformation that was done by a guy called Ash. And uh, I've had a few chats with him in the past and uh, he's, he's a funny guy. Um, definitely has been through the mills with this project that he did and uh, I hope you enjoy the interview. So Ash, um, welcome to the Property Renovation Podcast. Hi, right, James. How's it going? Good, good, good. Um, I'll just get straight into it. Um, cool. So you you bought a property first time, so you got yeah. on the property ladder, and that must have been quite exciting. Yeah, it was. It was um, It was a dream that I, I didn't think I was ever actually going to be able to achieve, if I'm being completely honest. Um, I'm actually a mortgage broker uh, mm-hmm. as a job, so my job is literally to set people up with homes all day long, and I just... Got a bit, dis- <laughs> a bit of despair, and I actually managed to do it. I found a found a property that was actually a repossession. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, just kept on looking through the through the you know right moves and the zooplas, and it came up, and I just kind of jumped on it. And, and you, you had to move pretty quick on doing that, I guess. Yeah. Well, I literally, I think I saw it on a Thursday. I went to see it on a Saturday, and I actually phoned and made an offer before I even got to the car because I knew it was that much of a deal. So. Good. Yeah, and uh, managed to get it, and the rest is history, as they say. Cool. Okay, and um, you literally ripped everything out and started again, right? So um, I got the, my first question here is basically um, what was the first steps of the remodeling process? Um, and yeah. Uh, yeah, you want to go ahead? Yeah, um, I don't really know if they were steps, if I'm being, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Um, everything was kind of just this is what I want to do. You know, I'm at A, I want to get to B, how do I do it? Mm. Um, and not having a builder's background, electrical background, plumber's background, um, being kind of, you know, the office guy. Um, I kind of just get people into the places and then I don't really hear about the stuff after. So yeah. when I put it and shut the door, it all became very real. Up to that point, I was treating it as a business transaction, but then <laughs> I got keys, which I never actually get, obviously, uh, in the day. But yeah, I kind of just thought, I really, you know, there's a lot of potential in the place. Mm-hmm. Uh, I looked at it whilst the mortgage was going through. I was just on Google images every day on the way to work, just looking at styles and kind of what stuff I liked and what I didn't like, um, writing down lists of what I wanted it to look like. Mm-hmm. Um, and just having a dream, <laughs> really, if I'm being completely honest, just having a dream, not really working out how I was going to pay for it. Or how I was gonna <laughs> get there. Um, just, just go for think, it. Yeah, yeah, that was it, really. Sometimes you just have to just go for it and see what happens. Yeah. I mean, um, part of it, I mean, you, I think you mentioned that you, you knocked down one of the walls and stuff like that. Was there any point where you had to consider about getting permission to do anything? or? Um, so it, it wasn't structural as such. So okay. um, it was just literally just a plasterboard wall. Okay. Uh, 
So it was just the kitchen was quite small. I think it was seven foot by seven foot. So there wasn't actually a lot of room in it at all, mm -hmm. but it was connected to the living room. Um, but it was like a old 90s style archway there, which mm. may have looked good back in the day, but I, I'm, I'm an advocate for space. And, I, re uh, I remember those. I remember how yeah. they, yeah. No, if I took it out, I, a, I'd probably get, you know, another foot and a half of the kitchen. Um, but then B also opens up, you know, becomes much more communal room and much more social room and I can cook and talk to other people. So yeah, we just, again, we just kind of went for it and <laughs> hope for the best really. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, and like you mentioned that you went on to Google and you've done a little bit, but like in general, how, how much research was you doing? Do you think? Um, images really, if I'm being completely, completely honest, the image thing was the very first point for me. So it was kind of like, what do I like? Cause at that point I, you know, I'd always been renting. So I hadn't actually been able to go and have, you know, complete freedom and, and do what I wanted in my style. So I didn't actually know what my style was. Mm. At that point. Um, so I had to, I actually did look at your website and that's not a plug that I actually did look <laughs> at your website, looked at your Instagram, uh, obviously on house and looking on, on, um, you know, YouTube and Google and looking at stuff and thought, right, I quite like this. I quite like that. And try to kind of mishmash it all together. Um, but yeah, it was just, it's just a lot of images at first. And then I was quite lucky cause I've got a lot of friends that are tradesmen. Yeah. Um, so I lent on my friends quite a lot. I'm not going to, you know, without them. And I've said this to everybody without them, I, I wouldn't have been able to do it. Yeah. It would have taken me probably twice as long or cost me twice as much. So if any of them are listening, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it was kind of show them the images and say, right, and I want this, I want to do that, and they kind of fill the gaps in for me, and I okay dropping this. So they can they tell you if it could have worked or not. And yeah, correct. Okay, yeah. I think um, the way p that people are looking now in terms of like when they want to do a renovation, they are they're going on to things like Pinterest and Google and stuff like that because it's more convenient. And yeah, I think easy. back in the day, you, you used to go to the shops and like see a. Do you remember when you used to go through the watches, yeah, go yeah. through the different watches of the curtains and the wallpapers and the paints and stuff? Yeah, those days are gone now. That's the thing. It's it's everything so you know at your fingertips. Um, I work up in the city, so I have a good forty forty five minute journey every day on the way to work. So that filled is mutually beneficial for me because it, it filled the time and yeah. obviously it gave me some ideas. But everything is just in in your hand, so yeah. you don't really need to anymore unless you want to you know go and feel it and. You know, if there's got a texture on a wallpaper or something, obviously you can't do that online. But mm. anything else is just so easily and so readily available that it, it does make it a lot easier. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, did you have like a certain timeline when you wanted to achieve what you wanted to achieve that in kind of thing? Um, and was there, if, the, if, if there was, can you give like any tips to listeners on how to achieve that in terms uh, of... Yeah. yeah, so as a first-time buyer, uh, first-time renovator, uh, first-time, you know, picking colours and styles and stuff, um, I was quite naive in my in my timeline at first. So uh, my dad came around, he looked around and he said, yes, got a lot of potential, what are you going to do? I explained it and I said, oh, yeah, I think I'm going to have it done in three, four months, um, which I could have done if I wasn't working full-time, but because I was working full-time and I was work living at the place as well while it was all being renovated and obviously very reliant on friends helping me as well. You know, you can't be pushy if people are helping you. You have to work around their, their, their schedule. Yeah. Uh, and obviously first purchase, you know, a lot of my money went into deposit and stuff like that. So actually, you know, I, I had to be quite patient. Um, what I would definitely do is, I mean, it, if I'm going to do it again, I'd probably save some extra cash and get it done professionally because then, you know, then it is on a timeline. You do have a timeline um, and you don't feel bad when you're asking your friends to come around at eight at night to finish off a little bit of tiling. <laughs> <laughs> was it um, just off the sideline off the, off the question script here, but um, was there any bits of the work that had to be done again? Um, not done again. So everything that was done has been done once and I'm very fortunate because I, well, I'm fortunate and fussy. So a lot of the stuff that I did, I, I maybe I had to paint again or do some bits again, but most of the stuff was actually done first time. The problem that I had was just, you know, having no idea. Mm. What I'm just if I'm going for it. Going, but that must had, be quite exciting though as well. Yeah, it was. I mean, it was one of those situations where I had a vision and I know what I wanted and I just needed to know how to get there. But when you're trying to work out wiring for, 
spotlights and stuff like that, you know, you need to bring someone else in because I'm not touching, <laughs> I'm not touching that <laughs> and, and zapping myself. But, um, everything, everything did go quite smoothly. Uh, if I am being completely honest, yeah. uh, there was, there was one moment when we took the bathroom out and took up the floor tiles and it was just completely rotten. The floor. Yeah. So the floor was completely rotten through the, the plywood and through some of the boards as well. So I actually had to, we actually had to rip that up, which was, yeah, that was really gross. Yeah. It came up, it came up like a, what's the best way I can put it? It came up like I was trying to pick up some mushy peas. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. How, that's yeah. How, yeah. Um, and new floors and stuff. There were obviously hitches, but I think you're going to get that anywhere. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But it was a, it was a great learning curve. And, and I mean, uh, I've managed to buy another property with my partner and we're in here now and I'm kind of looking at stuff and I'm looking at it through a different set of eyes now. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking at it thinking, that's a lot of work if I want to do that. So be prepared for it rather than just say, right, let's rip everything out. And then, you know, I, I literally ripped out the kitchen and the bathroom and I had to live there. And then as soon as I did it, I thought, I have no water now. So uh, <laughs> that, that, <laughs> that was a learning curve. So I'll definitely not rip out both the kitchen and the bathroom at the same time. anymore. Did, did you, that was one of my questions I was going to ask about the kitchen. Did you, cause you mentioned you went to Howden's or something. Yeah, correct. So, okay. um, my uh, again friends very lucky very fortunate um my best friend of 31 years now um literally basically all my life his brother is actually a manager at howden's so um yeah they they helped me design some stuff um and they're very patient with me as i said i'm quite fussy um so i was trying to work out colorways and then i didn't realize that you know if you put one worktop with one type of you know panel, <laughs> they look as good and then you have to have to have it all CAD designed all over again. So they were very, very um, patient with me and, and helped me out a lot, gave me some good tips. And did you choose the kitchen before you ripped out the other one? No. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. Not. So I, did, I, a... I, I literally, I think it was a case of, I can't believe this is mine. Yeah. I can do what I Excitement. Want with it. Yeah. Yeah. I, w- I can do what I want with it. And I wanted to do something on the first weekend, mm. you know? So, um, it was one of those ones, you know, I had, a, I had some tools, um, and I kind of just thought, right, let's get on with it. Let's, let's show the world that I'm doing some progress. Yeah. And actually after that, I, I kind of went back a step cause I, like I said, I had no toilet, <laughs> which so, was an issue. So how long did you think it was going to take and how long did it take? Um, so I thought it was probably going to take three months, which is definitely very naive considering it was, you know, as, as you've seen, it was a whole refit mm-hmm. everything you know um all ceilings were plastered floorboards came up replaced flooring went down everywhere was tiled everywhere was painted spotlights throughout the whole place um rewiring the whole kitchen yeah you know, every, everything is from scratch um so it, it definitely took a lot longer but that's because obviously not being a tradesman mm. i kind of just see the end result and i don't realize how much goes into it which is the same i think with any job if you don't do it yeah uh, but then once you get to see how fiddly some jobs are and how intricate some bits are, you, you, I have a whole new level of respect for you know, <laughs> sparkies and plumbers and plasterers and <laughs> all these people that I didn't have before. So, uh, yeah, it, it took, I think it took 10 months all in all. Okay. Um, but that was, I think it probably could have been done in six or seven, but I mm. think some of it was I wanted very specific stuff mm. and I had to wait for it and I had to order it and I had to turn up. And when it turned up, you know, I remember waiting uh, three weeks for spotlights, and it was driving. Three weeks. Yeah, I don't know why it took so long. They they sent half the spots, and then they sent some spots in a gloss white, and some in a okay a nickel, and then I had to send them back. And then so there was a lot of delay. Um, one thing I would say is I will never buy tiles from the internet again. Oh, because, really? Okay. Yeah, because actually. I found a really nice set of, they, they, I don't think they were Italian, but they look like Italian. Mm. And, um, yeah, basically I, I bought some and then I changed my, des- changed my design somewhat. And then I had to buy some more. And then every time they ship tiles, cause they're expensive, it's 50 quid shipping. So, yeah, yeah. um, I probably will go to somewhere closer that I can actually go in there and buy some more without spending 50 quid a pop. But <laughs> again, like I said, learning curve, everything. Yeah. yeah you learn. It's, yeah. it's invaluable really. Now, did you, I mean, obviously there were electrics involved, as you mentioned, there was plumbing and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, how many times did you go on YouTube and check something out to see how it was done? <laughs> <laughs> so, so if I'm being honest, 
uh, electrics and plumbing, yeah, I just flat out just did not do. Okay, because um, it was just one of those situations where everything could be off, but then I could reconnect it, and then everything blows, and my TV blows up, and nothing works anymore. So it was one of those where I'm going to leave it um, to the people in the know. Um, mm-hmm. My dad, my dad is uh, actually he's a landlord. Um, he's been doing kind of property for a while, so he was he was a really really big help. Um, he helped me with the with the kitchen, taking the wall out and stuff like that. But he's he's a dab hand at electrics. So okay. we we both wired all the spotlights throughout the flat. Um, we wired the kitchen from scratch. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, a lot of guidance, and then kind of just said, right, you know, you you chip all this out and put all the wires in, and yeah. I'll come do it. But uh, learned a lot of stuff. But most of it, like I said, the the trade tradey bits. I don't know if that's a good term or not. They were that was done by my friends and by people that knew what they was doing which i think is important <laughs> yeah so I, was, I would i would say that would be one of your bits of advice to give to anyone i guess when yes 100 yeah 100 percent. It's, it's just it costs more if it goes wrong than if you manage to pull it off yeah and, and so i think definitely stuff like that you need to need to seek the help of professionals good good um did you manage to uh, – did you manage your project yourself or someone else? Uh, well, you've already answered that one. Yes. Um, what was the biggest challenge uh, that you faced during the project, do you think? Uh, that's, that's a broad question. There are a lot of little challenges and there are a lot of big challenges. Um, one of the biggest challenges was keeping plaster dust off my clothes because <laughs> I was living there. And uh, every time I went to work at the time, they'd say, what's that on your butt? And I'd say, it's plaster dust. Mm. So uh, it, it gets everywhere, which I have a newfound respect for plaster dust as well, uh, yeah. to be honest with you. Um, like I say, it's, it's, I think it was just where I was quite reliant on, on my friends and my friends are helping me. I think the biggest challenge was wanting to get stuff done, but also not trying to take the mick and, and saying look i need you here because i you know yeah I, I was paying them but it was mates rates and you know they've been doing it all day so i appreciate that so i had to kind of just be flexible with that but yeah i think good things come to those who wait right i'll help you out as well you said sticking to your budget was quite a tough one as well that was definitely yeah that was uh yeah um my credit card can vouch for that <laughs> for that um i think i think i could have done it within budget but I think what happened was I got carried away looking at some stuff and trying to not trying to get a expensive finish on a cheap budget. That's not what I did. And actually the finish in the flat is actually very good, but trying to get a, a look of elegance and trying to get a look of sophistication mm. and, um, and not, you know, spending 500 quid in a tap, for example, you know, actually being, being quite savvy and going on eBay and literally hunting out stuff that's, quite similar but some things I, I had to do yeah an extravagance um and it's actually the flat's actually rented out now and some of the extravagances i wish i i took <laughs> with me because they're in there and i think oh these people are using my extravagant bits and i don't have them so i'm gonna have to shell out again because i'm i'm used to them now yeah uh, yeah but but yeah budget was budget was tough i think i ran so my budget was 12 twelve thousand mm. um the reason the budget was twelve thousand if i am completely honest was because that's how much i had left on my credit cards okay <laughs> okay i um and i think i used uh income from job as well um so i was quite skint for about six months and i think it i think it went up to about 16 all in all but that's that's furnishing as well so you know that's completely you know top to bottom mm-hmm. so I, I don't think it's that bad i mean not going to go into figures, but I made money off it. So yeah, you know, yeah. I think you make money off it. That's a good return on investment. Exactly. And you recoup your initial investment, then it's, it's a winner, right? How did you keep track of the costs in terms like, did you have like an Excel sheet or something like that that you were working with or just going off the seeing no, when it runs out? So much more basic than that. So um, I live in a, it's a, not a block of, not a tower block, but it's a block of flats, eight units in the, in the block. Mm-hmm. And, um, Basically, all the doors, this is how it started. All the doors are all the same. And the first thing, my friend who's a spare came around and said, you want to change that door? And I said, no, I don't, because if I change a door, everybody in this block is going to know that I'm trying to do something fancy. So I wanted to keep it the same. So what I actually did, thank you, Google, again, is I went to B&Q, spent two quid on some chalkboard paint, painted the inside of my door, 
um, which was quite a cool feature. Oh, yeah. was, every time someone came to my flat, they ended up signing the chalkboard door, which is quite nice. But it's actually really, really handy for keeping budget and keeping a shopping list and stuff. So every time I went out the door, I knew what I had to buy. didn't forget. Yeah. Uh, and between that and, and you know, a little bit of Excel, I'm not really a dab hand at it. So okay. a little bit of Excel and, and mainly a chalkboard door, believe it or not. Brilliant. Brilliant. Back to basics. Okay. <laughs> Okay, um, almost there towards the end now. Um, but your, what's your best tip uh, if there is a renovation beginner out there, first time ever, like yourself? Um, there are a lot of little tips, if I'm being honest. I don't know if there's one that's um, one that I could really say. I mean, what I would, what okay, the one tip I would say is plan out what you want to do before you start Mm -hmm. because if you have a clear vision of what you want, it's much easier to achieve it than if you're making up on the fly. Because I think if you, I did that with one of the rooms, I kind of liked it and then I changed it a bit. And I think that's when you end up spending a bit more money Mm -hmm. Um, because you know, you're just, you know, just, just going with your gut, which is fine sometimes, but sometimes you don't need to buy that lampshade or, or whatever it is, you know? So if you have a vision from the beginning, you can then go and research, on different websites, different companies, how much it's going to cost, mm. and prices. And you can sometimes, you know, you can get one thing that's, you know, some flooring, for example, that could be 30 quid a square meter. And then you can buy something that is almost identical for 12. Yeah. So a lot, it's a lot of research, um, but have a clear vision. That's what I would say. Definitely have a clear vision of what you want to do and, and stick with it. Cause normally your gut is, is normally right. I find anyway. So, yeah, I find if you if you ask too many people an opinion, it really mix with mixes with your head and it's, it sways you. Yeah, and then you start thinking, uh, you know, should I should I pick? I, I, it's funny you say that actually because I'm uh, currently designing my my garage, which is going to be a, a man cave. Okay. Um, basically, uh, going back to my friend at Howden's again, I'm going to have like a half. Of it's going to be like a utility room, mm-hmm. so it's going to look like a kitchen, but it's not going to have anything to cook in. It's just going to have you know tumble dry washing machine fridge this of course um and i looked at some worktops and i've looked at these same worktops before when i was in the flat and i liked i liked like a white marble effect and then i asked my friends and they're all saying no 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 no, go with this other one Mm. and i thought you guys all told me to do something else before and i didn't do it and i'm happy i didn't do it so i'm going to stick with my gut this time around as well so be true to yourself and just stick to your vision don't worry about what other people say you know if you're going to live there yeah then that's the person that you need to make happy with it, really. At the yeah. end of the day. Good. Good. Some good sound advice there. Cool. Um, listen, just, just before I let you go, um, you know what we're doing. You've, you've been nice enough to come on to the Profit Your Innovation podcast as well. Cool. Um, but what do you think about it? I'm interested in what you think about what we're trying to do. I think it's really helpful. Um, it's kind of it's funny because I obviously I, I follow you guys on Instagram and Facebook yeah. and that. Mm. Um, I like what you do. I like your designs are very different to what I do, but I think that's because I don't have, if I'm being honest, the balls to do some of the stuff that you guys are doing. I think I was just trying to do it first time and trying to just have it quite minimalist and smooth. So I didn't mess it up. Um, But I think that the podcast is actually really, really, really helpful. Um, Mm. I actually listened to one a few weeks ago about uh, contractors and uh, contractors and project management and stuff. And I thought, this would have been really helpful <laughs> before I started doing my own and making it up on the fly. So, um, yeah, definitely very useful. And I, I, I think it's very helpful. And I think obviously the amount of people that listen to it validates the fact that you guys are, are doing something that is useful for people that are interested in this sector. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. It's growing. It's growing very, very well. We're in 12 countries, um, over the last time I checked 6,000 downloads. Uh, it's doing very well. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Um, very good. But I'm not, I'm not, I'm not surprised, you know, I'm not blowing smoke at the ass, but I'm not surprised. It's, uh, it's very useful. So, yeah. uh, yeah, yeah. Thank so you. Happy to be on it. Thank you for inviting me to be on it. Thanks very much, Ash. Thank you very much. Hey guys, don't go just yet. We've got something very special to tell you. Now, on the 31st of October, we're going to be launching something called the Akiva Toolkit. Now, Akiva Projects sponsors the Property Renovation Podcast, and we're constantly looking for new ways to help homeowners save money and time and gain confidence in doing a project all on your own. And with the Akiva Toolkit, it's designed to do just that. So there's 10 documents in there and you would be able to download all 10 documents in one go. 
It will supercharge your confidence and it will make you seem super organized and give the impression to your builder that you're not someone to be reckoned with and you can't be taken advantage of. So within the 10 documents, you get a project schedule, you get an A to Z blueprint of the perfect renovation, you get an electrical quantity document so that you can count all of the electrics that you're having in your property and more and more. So for a short space of time, we're going to be giving away the entire toolkit and all you need to do is email us marketing at akivaprojects.com but it's going to start at 9.99 a reduced 9.99 for two weeks and then it will be 15 pounds just 15 pounds to download the entire 10 documents and believe me you will get your return on investment so so much it's going to save you so much money so much time and you'll be super organized so don't forget go onto the website very soon you'll see lots of adverts going out So it's the Akiva Toolkit launching on the 31st of October. Thank you very much.